And welcome to the third episode of our podcast, which we still haven't found a title for. Yeah, I was uh, I was actually trying to think of titles uh, for a couple days now, and every time I thought of a title, mm-hmm. I'd Google it, and somebody already had that title. So I've kind of given up. Well, what what are some what are some of the ideas that you've had? The one I really liked was uh, "Will Work for Games." The Will Work oh. for Games podcast. Mm-hmm. Already taken. I mean, surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> so I think somebody had a blog or a website or something that already had that name. So of course, you know, of course, if it's not LLC, I guess we could use it. <laughs> yeah, right? Just steal it. <laughs> just steal it and use it. Who cares? Who cares? Yep. Take it for ourselves. Take the money and run. That's right. That's yeah. Right. So I've been thinking. I've been thinking about. Uh, some titles as well, but I guess the big news is and why why we're why we're talking about this now is we are finally on iTunes. Yeah, awesome, and that's thanks thanks to you, Rob. You got us up on iTunes, so uh, I haven't put the links up on the site yet, but I'm going to do that soon. I've been so I've been so slammed busy this week at work, and then uh, also uh, uh, like I informed you about a week week and a half ago, my wife is pregnant, so. Uh, We've had a couple doctor's visits, and uh, so this will be our second child. So we've had a couple doctor's visits and some other things going on. So exciting, exciting news. I, I was going to say I'm really sorry to hear that. <laughs> it sounds devastating. No, not at all. My wife my wife is – she started talking about having one. And I'm like, having oh. one? That's how you refer to it? That's how people who don't have any children refer to it? <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What? What you want one of those those things? <laughs> I'm sorry, my wife is now debating whether or not we should try to have a child of our own. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm a gigantic child, so I don't want one. <laughs> I'm like, why? Then you'll gonna... have somebody to play with. <laughs> yeah, you know, but then what if the what if the kid's not cool? What if the kid's not into this shit? Oh, and, trust me, they'll. If it's well, it depends. If it's a little boy. They'll they'll emu- emulate you for quite a while, so that's how my son it. is. You know, you're not really selling me on this kid idea. Oh. Hey, hey, <laughs> I wasn't sold on it at first either. No, it's actually like it's actually kind of like marriage. You know, it's like one of those ones. One of your buddies gets married. He keeps talking about how great it is until finally you get married, and then you know he he lets the cat out of the bag, and he's like, "Ha, ah, you fucking idiot." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, now I'm not the only one who's married. Same thing with children. Oh, you had a kid, you stupid idiot. <laughs> we we all we got married on the predication that we that neither of us wanted kids. So, but oh, her, okay. Her her sister just had her second set of twins. And then oh a couple wow! Of, yeah, and a couple of her, other of her friends have had kids. So it's like, no so twins run in her family. Oh great! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyways, awesome. so you've been busy at work. Yes, extremely busy. We've had a server at work crash like three times. So, Sweet. yeah, yeah. So, and what doesn't what 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 doesn't help the situation is that our network is actually we have a server on site and then we have a server off site and then we have actually are tied into a network in Canada, in Calgary, uh, where our main office is. So it's just it, you know just nothing but problems trying to get that stuff to work. So, well. Oh well, though those truck drivers, those truck drivers can live without their computers for a little while. Exactly, they just need to go back to CB radios. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so while you're not making babies and working all the time fixing servers, oh by the way, I'm joined by Nick Walchek. Oh yeah, yeah, we didn't yeah, do our introductions. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm Rob Casaletta, joining you again for episode number three. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. So while while you while you're not working and uh, depositing sperm everywhere, what have you been playing? Well, who's, who says that while I'm playing, I'm not depositing sperm everywhere? Whoa! Either, so. Revelation! <laughs> wow. No. Uh, now, let's see here. I've been trying to play a bunch of different stuff because, uh, man, I just, you know, I've been working on the website and uh, I've been reaching out to different people and uh, the guys at uh, Overkill Software that made Payday 2 that just came out this Tuesday, uh, they were amazing. They sent me like eight free copies of the game, uh, press copies for Steam, uh, which I handed out 
to tons of different people, and we all got on and played. Uh, which was it's it's a pretty cool game. I like it. I'm kind of I'm kind of getting burnt out on shooters, mm-hmm. and uh, it's different enough to actually make it fun to to want to play. So uh, I was playing that, and then uh, ooh, I I know this is this is a horrible thing to say, especially when they sent me a, a code for the game. The the guys, I think it's Spider Spider mm-hmm. Studios or something. They made this. Uh, this digital title called Mars Warlogs. They sent me that. Uh, it's it's I think it's PC and Xbox Live Arcade. Uh, yeah, I, I played about maybe about 15 minutes of that. And <laughs> decided I was going to walk away from that one. I wasn't That's too good. impressed. So that uh, and then I've been playing uh, the Batman Arkham Origins uh, beta, mm-hmm. which. I'm on a non-disclosure agreement for having it, so I can't really, can't really go into the to the minute details on what what it is. I will say it is extremely good. It's not attacked on multiplayer. It, mm-hmm. It's not just a cash in like, oh man, we have a game. Oh, we gotta have multiplayer. Put multiplayer in the title. It's actually it's actually done really well. I was really concerned because the multiplayer portion of the game is done by Splash Damage, which did a game called Brink, which okay. I don't know if you I don't know if you ever did Brink, but Brink made really big promises and then fell flat on flat on its face when it came out. Uh, finally, came out to the retail market. Uh, but uh, I really enjoyed the, I'm really enjoying the Batman multiplayer because they are they've been able to incorporate so much of the single player gameplay into the multiplayer. So, and you know, the information that has been released is it's, you know, it's three teams. You have a team, one team of, or two teams of three and then one team of two. And the team of two plays uh, like Batman and Robin and they, you know, they have all the gadgets and uh, swing around from the gargoyles and all the different, you know, things. And uh, they can, you know, they're real agile and can stalk their prey. And then the other teams on the ground play kind of, uh, kind of Gears of War just style. You know, it's, hmm. You know, the kind of a heavier, meatier feeling, like when the guys are running around, you hold the A button down to run, and, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it, you've got spawns and stuff, so, and they're out to do a bunch, there's a bunch of different things uh, going on at one time, which is, it, you know, it's kind of neat, because there's, there's multiple, multiple things going on to win, and multiple things to help out, so, uh, but it, it, it's, you know, it, it's good, so I'm happy because I've I've really enjoyed that series thus far. I think they've done a lot of justice with the license. You know, mm-hmm. they put their own spin on it. They put their own spin on the characters, but they kept it pretty true to a, you know, to that you know that darker Batman, that darker mature Batman. They've kept it really true to that. So, but that that's been pretty good to play. So, oh, that's and the, the, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I had to mean oh. to interrupt you. I said that sounds pretty promising because I I wasn't. I feel a little bit fatigued on the Batman series, and I think if the multiplayer is good that it, and it's something that I'd want to play, it might get me back into it. So what you're saying is pretty positive. I mean, it, it might get back onto my radar. You know, once you can really talk about it, I'd like to hear about it. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I can talk to you about it offline. <laughs> dude, this, we're, we're, you know, they're going to find out that you just no, said this. I don't think they're... I don't, yeah. That's yeah, what Twitter direct messages are for. I don't so think no they're gonna knows. hunt me down. So, <laughs> so, so oh, and I and I've mm-hmm. and I've tinkered with Dragon's Crown. Okay. Uh, I've I've been really wanting to play more of it, but I just haven't had the time. I've got a couple buddies that bought it, and they've been blowing up my phone, just like, oh, get on Dragon's Crown, get on Dragon's Crown. But uh, I think I played enough of it to get up to like level four or five, and that's about as far as I got into Dragon's Crown. It's a really beautiful game, you know. Mm-hmm hack and slash beat 'em up style side scroller the artwork is amazing i think it's i can't remember the name of the studio but it's the guys that i believe did odin sphere uh mm-hmm. yep You're previously right. and their artwork was really good so I, i've been i've been pleasantly surprised with that so i hear you have to get quite a ways in it though before it lets you even play cooperative so really that might yeah, that it, might detour me i also have i bought that this weekend and i've been playing it a little bit so it sounds like you and i are are a about at the same point in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, art style is fantastic. I like it. Do you have a take? I know I know it was a little bit of a controversy last week in terms of the titties. T- <laughs> I mean, do you have, do yeah. you have a take on that? Or? 
it's man. I mean, that game is through and through Japanese. What do you you know? <laughs> I know. What do you expect? I you I know, know. I'm surprised there's not a, a a scene in the intro where you know like a you know tentacles come out and fondle the sorceress or something like that. That would be <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be game. that would be you know pretty par for the course when it comes to those types of games. So no, I mean it's a little gratuitous and over the top. I mean I it's you know I don't know. You know, maybe for some 16-year-old or 15-year-old somewhere playing PlayStation, that's really doing it for him. But I'm, you know, I, I guess this is showing my age. I'm just kind of more interested in if the game is good or not. Not how big the titties are or how well they <laughs> animate when they jiggle on the screen. So, Yeah, yeah. I mean, <sighs> the whole, <sighs> my whole thing with, with, any, with what if nothing offends me. All right, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm the product of Italian immigrants. Nothing really offends me, but also at the same time, I recognize that I can't tell someone what offends them. If it mm-hmm. offends you, it offends you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That doesn't make you a good or bad person either way. So, yeah, you know. But the game, the, the problem. I, I actually have problems with the game in that I think I'm going to get bored of it really quick. Well, that that's the, like I said, that's what I've heard that uh, that it, you because m- my buddy Jake, uh, he's like level like fourteen, and he mm-hmm. hasn't gotten to the point yet where it's allowing you to play cooperatively. You know, so I'm just like, man, if I have to play that high before it's going to allow me to start bringing, because the real draw of that game to me was to be able to bring some people in to play with me. You know, it's different. Uh, Mm-hmm. different classes and stuff and just kind of hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, man, I don't know, man. If you have to play much higher than that, I'm probably going to lose interest before I really get into the game. So, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I got, what, how long did it take you to get to level 5? About an hour? Yeah, probably an hour or two. Because you and I are at, this, at the same point, it sounds like, and I'm like, I can. I had a, I had a free weekend this past week, and my wife was out of town. And I say like, I can play this brand new game that I bought all day long, but I don't want to. I, <laughs> yeah. It's like okay, square, 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 <laughs> square. <laughs> you know, it, it's the, the art style is fantastic. That's what's going to pull me through the game. Um, yeah, I also heard there's only like nine stages in the game. Wonderful. Uh, and you keep looping through the stages as you get higher and higher, and then, of course, the enemies change, the bosses change, and the loot drops change, and the real draw is supposed to be the loot drops, like, mm-hmm. constantly, you know, kind of, you know, almost like, like a, a... Yeah, almost like a 2D Diablo, where yeah. you're just playing, you're just constantly playing for the loot, so... And I can... I, if the loots are good, I am in. I like my loots. Yeah. So have you been playing anything else? No, I think that's it for uh, right now. So uh, I've really been digging, like I said, I've really been digging that Batman. I think it's, you know, it's another thing where, uh, similar to the Payday, it's kind of, it's a sh- even though the Payday is a shooter and mm-hmm. the Batman has some shooting elements into it, they're different enough where I don't feel like I'm getting online and just looking down the barrel of a gun shooting someone. Right you on, know, right on. So. Cool, cool. So, what about you? What are you, other than Dragon's Crown? What are what are you playing? Other than Dragon's Crown, I I played a little bit more uh, Future Soldier with my brother. My brother is fucking horrible at video games. <laughs> fucking, yeah. he's my he's my little brother. I love this kid, but kid, he's thirty two years old. Motherfucker cannot play that game at all. And I'm just sitting there. We have to do the, the level over and over and over again because he's breaking cover and shit. It's like... Fuck. He's like rushing in and alerting everyone. Yeah, and it's like I'm yelling at him. Mike, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> kick back. I got the UAV going right now. <laughs> um, and I'm still going through my backlog. I have I started playing Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Yeah. That game is boring as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah. it, it, it's it's pretty, but it's uh, I mean, it's you know, it's a God of War ripoff, and it's I mean, a bad one. I, yeah, it's like I, I keep I keep reaching for the right thumbstick to move the camera around, mm-hmm. and it's not there, and it's just like it's just you know. Yeah, I think room. that was a huge. I think that was a huge complaint in the original one because in all the video docs I've watched for the sequel coming out, the one of the main things they they feature is that you're going to be able to have full camera control in the sequel. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I like Castlevania games. I mean, you and I have been playing games for almost 30 years now. Yep. And, you know, we grew up with Castlevania, so if it has, have, if it has Castlevania in the title, I'm more apt to be into it. Right. And this one is just like, all right, go to a room, beat those guys up, jump, 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 jump. Go to two more rooms, beat them up. It's like it, it just there's no flow to the game. It's like well, it, it reminded me a lot. Uh, I and I don't think I ever finished it, but there was like a wasn't there a Castlevania uh, like a almost like a Devil May Cry style Castlevania mm-hmm. that came out on PlayStation Two. Play- yep. Yeah. It 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 reminds me of just like a you know more modern version of that. Yeah, I don't think they solved the problems of of a three D three D Castlevania game. I'm well, I'm hopeful for two. Not quite as bad as Castlevania on the sixty four was, but <laughs> I don't know if you ever played that one. It's just one of those things that I've erased from my memory. <laughs> oh, okay, but yeah. If you did, I'll start, then, dream- yeah. I'll start having nightmares about that tonight. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and then, other than that, I have been playing. I always play FIFA. I'm always playing. Yeah, FIFA. I love the game, but I started playing Bullet Storm. <laughs> yeah, I saw your a tweet about that, and I, I know I answered you back. Yeah, yes. about how many times you heard the word "dick" in the first like twenty minutes of that game. Yeah, I am basically immune to any dialogue in that game. Now. <laughs> like, I seriously think they handed uh, like a thirteen-year-old like a notebook and a <laughs> pen and said, "Here, write us a fucking video game." You know, write us the dialogue. We got the technical stuff. You know, building the game, designing the characters, graphics. We got all that stuff down, kid. All we need is what the people are going to say. And that kid was like, you know, ah, dick face. Oh, that's great. You know, yeah, like, I'm going to slap you with my dick. I'm going to, sl- yeah. yeah. Even better, it's like I'm going to slap you with my dick, dick. You know, it's. I think there's actually <laughs> points in the game where they try to fit the word dick like multiple times into one sentence. Like, hey, can is there any way possible we can write a line in this game where you start with the word dick, have dick three words in, and then have dick at the end of it? That would be amazing. A three dick sentence would be amazing. <laughs> you know? so, reach, reach for the stars, young man. You can do that. I yeah, I, I you know that's uh that's one of those games where you play the demo. I to me it was like I played the demo when the demo came out, and that was that was about all I needed. Like I I you know I ended up playing the full game. Because the demo was good, but I just realized, wow, the the five minutes that I played in the demo that I enjoyed, that's they they drug that five minutes out through a two, you know, this this multiple hour campaign. So yeah, and the reason I bought it is is for a couple of years I really respect Arthur Geese. I really mm-hmm. like his work. I don't agree with him all the time, but I respect the hell out of out of his work. And for a like a, an entire year, he just kept tweeting bullet storm, bullet storm, bullet storm. I'm like, all right, it's twenty bucks. I'm just gonna go buy it. And yeah, it's a game. Yeah, it is a game. So that is all I am playing. Well, it's really you know, and the funny thing is, it is it's really a game in a game because it's it's a shooter, but then it's got this little meta game stuck inside of it where you're just constantly trying to juggle guys and shoot them in the air and shoot them with different weapons and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So you 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 almost you almost lose focus on the whole core mechanics of the game, you know. Like I, I at, at some point I totally didn't care about where I was going, what I was doing, who I was killing, why I was killing them. All I cared about is how can I get a higher score. Yeah, you know? I think I think that's the whole point of the game, though. It's more of like an arcade first person shooter where it's just rack up a high score. That part is cool, but it's like, you know, I've played a million games that are are better than Bulletstorm and yeah you know. I think something like that would work you know as like a, a digital title that you could yeah. sit down and play for a half an hour mm-hmm. co-op you know get in get it four buddies in the room and see how high you can score in an arena which is in the game I know you can do that in that game but I mean if it would have been just that you know in the digital realm or something that would have been better than trying to take that formula and drag it out because you know Three or four hours into the game, you you know you find that one routine and you just keep repeating that routine on guys over and over. Like, okay, if I do this, this, and this, that gets me the highest score I can get right now. Yeah, it's a, it would it would it would almost be like a Gears of War, which Epic also made. So, hmm, horde <laughs> mode. But yeah, you know, doing it that way would probably benefit the game. Single players, it's cool. There's nothing really wrong with it, but it's all right. So, it's got a lot of dick in it. 
<laughs> yeah, digital digital dick, the way of the future. <laughs> All right, so I guess let's move on to some news. It's been a All while right. since we've done this. What, two, three weeks? Yeah, it's been a while. I apologize. I know. My, like I, I said, know. my schedule's been crazy. Well, I'm crazy. Just rub in my face, Rob. Okay, I understand. I'm just... you got to be a sales guy. My, my schedule is what they call flexible. Yeah. <laughs> you got one of those cushy jobs. Remind uh, me yeah. again, what does your wife do for a living again? She's uh, an engineer. So. <laughs> so that means you go to work to play. You're you're like the play job, right? <laughs> no, I've actually I've been I've been working. I can't. I'm also an under under an NDA for this particular deal I'm working on, but it's it is really big and it's worldwide. So I've been getting up at like four in the morning to contact people in Europe and and work on that. So it's I I've been busy just. Towards the end of the day, I could just end my day. Like, fuck it. Yeah. Right on. That's cool. I'm in a podcast, so fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I've got way, way more important people to talk to than these guys in Europe. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, news today. Boom. Call of Duty multiplayer. Mm hmm. All right. Next piece of news. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Next piece of news. <laughs> Xbox One coming out to 13 territories instead of the 21 that they initially said. What are your any thoughts on that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they're having manufacturing issues. That could be a possibility. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, other than that, I can think maybe they're reversing and changing all these policies all the time. It's you know, it's complicating things. On their end, as far mm -hmm. as okay, well, how are we going to handle it in this territory? Mm -hmm. How are we going to handle it in this territory now? So, you know, it just seems like every day that I, you know, get on my phone or get on the computer and, and open the web browser, you know, I see a 180 coming out of them for something they've decided they're. Oh, wait! You don't yeah, have to have Connect yeah. now. You don't have to connect your Connect to the Xbox One. Wait a minute! Didn't you? Didn't you tell us that we had to have that thing hooked up? That that's what makes the system so revolutionary? Nick, 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 you know? don't get ahead of yourselves. We, we, it's the topic of the week. You're blowing it right now. Calm down. Well, you Thank zoomed you. right by. You zoomed right by Call of Duty, so you took me by surprise there. <laughs> well, do you so. want to add anything to the Call of Duty multiplayer? <laughs> uh, that, yes, that, I just want to talk about what was the name of the mode they showed? Uh, cranked. <laughs> They have a new multiplayer mode called Cranked, where if you don't kill somebody in 30 seconds, you explode. Cool. Yeah, the problem is, is everybody dies in 30 seconds in Call of Duty. <laughs> I don't. At least I do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Isn't it the point, like, to not last? I, I I have no idea. I just know that in usually my average life span is about 30 seconds right now in Call of Duty before somebody shoots me or or you know bombs me with something or whatever drops something on me. Isn't isn't an an exceptional kill death death ratio like one to one? Exceptional, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. If you're if you're if you're one if you're one point oh kill death or higher, you are pretty amazing. Yeah, so it, it's like anything you know. The average player is going to be like point five. Yeah, I think I think I quit Black Ops two at a at a one to one kill to death. That's where I quit it and I just stopped. I was like, if I keep playing this game, I'm I'm going to kill myself. So yeah, I mean it's good that they're pumping it up. But I, it's it's not for me. So yeah, uh, it, it just uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't impressed. You know, I, you know, it's it's kind of funny that uh, I was watching it and I was looking at it and I was just like, really? This I mean, this doesn't look any different to me at all. I mean, it uh, you know, you it. can cut. I know you can customize your characters now, and that's cool. You that's know, what? cool. Yeah, throwing your own flavor on your guy, mm -hmm. make him, make your guy feel, you know, like you own him. Uh, but then, just like when they got into the actual gameplay and they were showing that live demonstration on stage and they were running around shooting each other, I was like, it looks crisper, but detail wise, I mean, the, the Call of Duty games actually looked pretty good on this current gen. Yes, they did they, for sixty frames a second. They mm -hmm. looked really well. Uh, so I, I, you know, I, I, I argue with people all the time because they're like, oh no, it's a whole new graphics engine, and I'm like, no, I no, guarantee, I Bullshit. guarantee they 
they took the same engine and they just added a bunch of new bells and whistle, whistles to it that that you know because of the extra power of the new hardware. So yeah, bullshit. That's a new engine. They're, they're, Activision's in the game of making Call of Duty as cheaply as they possibly can because that's their cash cow. <laughs> They're not gonna. They're not gonna invest in a new engine at this point in time. They got something that works. They're gonna upscale it, put some nice, pretty textures on it. I, I noticed that it seemed like there were some destructible environments in there, although it didn't look it's like all scripted. It, yeah, it, it, I was gonna say it didn't look like Battlefield destruction where everything can go. It seemed like that one thing can go. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, I'm not. I don't. I'm just not a fan of those games anymore. It is yep. what it is. They're they're real popular and people love them and cool. Go for it. Um, just... Well, I'm a, you know I'm a compa- I, I I like to be competitive when I game. I, I like to mm-hmm. get on and play a shooter. I like to get on and play multiplayer. But I'm just I, I don't know. I think I'm just so burnt out on military shooters that yes. I just I need something different. You know, it's the same thing uh, every single time. It's just a slight tweaks here and there. But yeah. you know, again, I look at the launch lineup and I'm like. My intention is not to get Call of Duty Ghosts. Mm-hmm. But the launch lineups the way that they are, you know, in February when I'm I'm done playing the games that are out for launch, I'm like I'm, I might look at Call of Duty Ghosts at that point in time and say, all right, well I've got no choice, I'm going to buy you. But it is what it is. But back back to the Xbox uh, going down to 13 territories. Ooh. I, uh, the news isn't good. The news is not good, and the and the reason behind it was to, so they can like update the dashboard for different regions and stuff like that. That's a load of bullshit, in my opinion. Yeah, I think they're like I said. I just think they're running into problems on the back end, you know, because they have to keep reversing all these policies and changing things. So, you know, just uh, I, I mean, I don't know what you're. Do you think it, it's something different? Do you think it's manufacturing issues? I mean, it, you know. It could very well be manufacturing issues. Uh, that would be that if I'm going to point to one thing, I would say manufacturing issues are probably it. And they're basically going to say like, okay, I mean, North America, number one territory, we've got to make sure we launch there. And they probably picked their, you know, they probably just went down in the line and said these are our number one, number two, number three, and they just ranked them and said, all right, what can we, what can we do? And yeah. you know. They figured out what they can do in terms of manufacturing, and you know, if you're not on that list, if you're not in the top 13, sorry. Um, but maybe there's something different. But I, I would probably say manufacturing. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and I, and I didn't, you know, I should have done my research a little bit better, but I didn't even I didn't even check to look to see, you know, the, if at the, the same time those territories that uh, they're not going to be launching in this year. Uh, if PlayStation 4 is going to be available this year in those territories. Because, I mean, that's a big blow to them as well because, you know, those people that are early adopters that were originally backing the Xbox One that are going to be like, yeah, I've got an Xbox 360, I'm going to get an Xbox One, I'm ready for the next generation. Yeah. Oh, shit, what do you mean I have to wait till February of next year now or, or March or whatever, you know? And then, oh, PlayStation 4 is available launch day here? Oh, well, you know. I got my my money in my pocket, ready to buy next gen game system. Yeah, so. I mean, all yeah, that's that's actually a good thing. We I, I should look into that as well and, and and see where they're at with that. But I will we'll just look into that. So <laughs> the the next big piece of news is your boy, your next door neighbor, John Carmack, is joining the Oculus Rift team. What do you think? I think John Carmack is a crazy motherfucker. <laughs> in all the in all the good ways, right? And yeah, and all yeah. I mean, he's just. I mean, I, I think the guy is rich out of his mind, and he just decides what he wants to do. I mean, Jesus wasn't the doesn't the guy you know he drive Ferraris and uh you know I, I what's his he she shoots like model rockets into space. I mm-hmm. mean you know so he you know I think this is just another you know another thing that on a whim he just decided hey you know this is. This tech looks great. I see a future for it. You know, I'm going to jump on this bandwagon and see what's going on. I mean, that it's getting a lot of uh, it's getting a lot of uh, press and it sure and, is. Uh, it's funny because when uh, uh, me and me and uh, my buddy Kevin we went down to QuakeCon, uh, 
they had the Omni and the mm-hmm. Oculus there together. And I don't know if you're familiar with what the Omni is. I am not. The Omni is this pedestal that you stand in. It has a circular uh, guardrail that goes all around you, mm-hmm. and it's concave. Mm-hmm. And they design these special shoes you wear that fit that have these okay. uh, teeth on the bottom that fit in these grooves, mm-hmm. right? And then you put on the Oculus Rift, and you've got the little gun, you know, or whatever, and you can literally move inside this thing 360 degrees, and you can full on sprint. And because wow. of the be, because of the frictionless, uh, like Teflon coating or whatever they put on the bottom of these shoes in this in this concave platform. You can just run, and it's and it's like full freedom of movement. So they Ooh. had a guy. They had a guy there, uh, that you know you fill you fill out a waiver form, and you could get in this thing, and you could do this. So Kevin, my buddy Kevin, he filled out the waiver, and he got in there, and he played Half Life Two on the Oculus Rift mm-hmm. uh, in the Omni. Mm-hmm. And I put I put that thing up on YouTube video. It's like maybe a minute and something long, and I've gotten two hundred views. Really? So yeah. So you know, and uh, you need and, to botanize that shit, man. Get paid. What? You need to botanize <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's uh, I, I, I think it's one of those things. Like when he got out of it, I asked him what he thought, and he said, you know, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. But I'm a li- you know, but at the same time, we both agreed we're kind of worried. Like, why do we keep seeing all the like all this stuff they show on Oculus Rift? Why is it games that came out like five or six years ago? Why do they, you know, and and how much is a setup like that going to cost? I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's it, you're gonna it's gonna be available for the elite to be able to, you know, oh, I'm gonna spend five ten thousand dollars on this rig. So I can play Oculus Rift and run around, you know, and run in place and play these games and feel like I'm really in the game. And, and I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it's cool tech, but realistic. How many years from now is it going to be affordable, you know, just to the average average Mo and Joe to be able to buy that? So yeah, I mean, there. It's exciting for me because that's something that's. The, I see the Oculus Rift as something that can innovate and make games better. Perhaps. Um, I don't know enough about it yet. I'm slightly excited. Carmack joining that team and really focusing his efforts on that. It's it's it tells me that someone like that that is that is so into it um, really believes that that games can evolve, and that's a, that's part of the evolution is the Oculus Rift. So I just yeah, think it's I'm- interesting. Um, you know what does that do for Id now that he's he's not necessarily gone, but it also kind of tells me it's like all right. I've I've done everything I can do with this company. I'm moving on to do something else. Mm-hmm. So. Well, it also I also have to wonder if it's kind of an abandoning ship move because could be. I mean, they pumped up Rage to Rage no end. Sucked. And that game bombed. Fucking sucked. Did yeah, you play that? Game that? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it was very very pretty, but there was nothing was special it? about it at all. Pop yeah, in, it pop, how much pop in did you see? What did you What did you play it on? I played it on the PS3. Okay, so you, yeah, I think Rage was. I mean, I played on PC, so wasn't it broken know. like right out of the gate on PC? Uh, depending on what kind of video card you had. Okay. Okay. I think it was if you had an NVIDIA video card it, opposed to a ATI, you had some major problems. But I see. But it was it was a very beautiful game. Uh, but there was nothing to it. It was a shooter. I mean, it was just it was you know Mad Max meets Doom, and that's what it was. I mean, there was nothing really amazing about it. Uh, and then, of course, now you get, you know, uh, uh, Doom 4 having, you know, these multiple cancellations and delays mm-hmm. and all this. And now there's, you know, word that I guess it's just being canceled altogether. Uh, they were so, making it again. What? I thought, I thought for sure they were focusing all their efforts on Doom 4. Yeah, I, I heard that there's been multi- – they've, they've, sh- they've come to multiple builds of the game, and every time they – begin showing it to, you know, the the people that make the decisions, they scrap it because they don't think it's good enough or they don't think it's innovative enough. They think it's the same mm-hmm. thing. I don't know. So well, that, I mean, some I heard it's kind of in development limbo. Yeah, I mean, you've got Wolfenstein, you've got Doom, you've got Quake, you've got Rage. What other types of games other than a first-person shooter does it do? Yeah. None. Well, I, I, I honestly cannot think of any. 
yeah, they they need to uh, they need to uh, to uh, change it up, innovate a little bit. So okay, now I guess we'll go into Gamescom is next week. Do you have any any predictions or anything that you'd like to see out of Gamescom? Oh, uh, well, I've what's been the big news out of Gamecom? Well, that Microsoft is going to the the rumor is they're going to announce another exclusive title. Mm. Well, they said they've they have said that they are going to announce another unnamed. Oh, okay, so title. it's so it's officially yeah. been said stated yes. now that they are going to. Re- okay, so that'll yes. be cool to see. You know, if it's if it's something new, mm-hmm. uh, if it's a new IP, I'll be excited. Do you? What uh, do you think? Do you think it's going to be a new IP? I don't know. What do you think it could be? I mean, uh, some sort of take on a Fables game. You think so? Mm-hmm. You think it's going to be a, a take on a Fable with the Fable Studio working on that HD remake? Of the Fable I, Anniversary Edition? I think that you're going to get some sort of MMO-style Fable game. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I might be happy with that if they took it in that direction. Yeah, I think Ch- you're not going to get... It up. I don't think it's going to be Fable 4, but I think it's going to be a Fable franchise that's that's new. Um, I don't know if they're going to do any, any new IP. I mean, it's, it's Microsoft. Do they really have any new IP? Or do they just recycle their really good... Well, they, they need really good. That's what I'm saying. They yeah. need a new IP. Do they? I don't. Uh, do do they? I think so. So do you think when the next Halo game comes out, people are not going to buy it? Well, yeah, people will buy it, but I mean, I the the way I look at it is is that you still have to you can still release your franchise, your key franchises. But you know, at one point that franchise was brand new. You know, at mm-hmm. one point yep. there was a. T- point in time that it was a brand new IP. So how are you ever going to know if you have another hit on your hands unless you take a chance, you know, and and, and bet a little bit of your cash on something new, something different. So. They did. It was called The Surface. And, oops. <laughs> um, no, but I, you know, I mean, the whole strategy with the 360 was we were going to make this console that is very easy for third parties to develop for, and we're going to have our very few core franchises that we know we're going to sell, and we're going to rely on third parties to make the the breadth and depth of the games that are available for it. I don't know if that's going to be the Xbox One philosophy, but judging by what Microsoft has done for the past you know eight years, it doesn't seem out of the realm of possibilities. I mean, I agree with you. They do need something new. I mean, at least Sony throws shit on the wall and see what's going to stick. Right. At the very least. Like we talked about last last time we did a podcast, at least you know you're going to get quantity of games from Sony, and they're going mm-hmm. to try something, and they don't necessarily care if it sells. They, well, yeah, I mean, they, care, it's, they care if it sells or not, but I think they... Well, look, look at the launch on PS4. Mm-hmm. You're gonna, Like that, that Knack game, you know? Yep. I mean... That's a brand new IP. I mean, and you're launching your system with that. Yep. That's not. I mean, that's not done anymore. I mean, no. they, you know, most people, most companies, when they launch their system, they they have an established IP that they launch with, to you know, to to guarantee the tie and sale with the with the box, you know. So, you know, so it's kind of pleasant to see them, you know, to see Sony, you know, releasing a a, a different title. So. Yeah, and they they always do that type of stuff, which is cool. I mean, you're gonna get Puppeteer later this year. Like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell? They they at least will say we will allow you to be creative. Yes, we want the game to sell. If it doesn't sell, it's still a creative game, and it was out there. So I, I do respect uh, Sony for that a lot. But uh, I'm I'm hoping, knock on wood, that we finally get some release date stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean some solid dates on when, yeah. when things are coming like out? The, yeah. It's going like the Xbox One and PlayStation Four are going to be out on these days. Oh yeah, I I would hope so. I mean, it's getting so close. Uh, it is. Man, I know they have that. I know nothing really ever came of that. Uh, was it Toys R Us that leaked that ad, or whatever? They had that leak online or something of the release dates. Refresh my memory. Did wasn't it? Wasn't the Xbox One in later late? November and the PlayStation 4 was in December. Uh, no, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. It was. Uh, the PlayStation 4 was actually like the second week of December. That's got to be impossible. That's yeah. that is. I, I mean, I would assume. I would totally assume that both these systems would be launching before Black Friday, before Thanksgiving shopping. 
Yeah, That's... the way the way that I would look at it is that you know, depending upon what their production is like and, and how fast they can manufacture the systems cleanly, what I would look at is how many cycles can I get before Christmas is over. So I'm looking at I would like to release if if everything was was good. I'd like to release a system about three weeks before Black Friday. It's going to sell out. You're going to get huge amount of buzz, and then those Black Friday ads come out. Everyone's going to be wanting to buy. Right. You're able to, like, hey, we magically were able to get more systems out for you for the weekend of Black Friday. You have another sales cycle. You're going to sell that out again. And right. then if you can get one more before Christmas, like as close to Christmas as possible to build up that tension, and yep. release, and you get three sales cycles out of it before Christmas. I think that's the optimum. Yeah, and then if you can't find it, you buy a Wii U. <laughs> yeah, that, dude, that's crazy talk, man. That is insanity. Because um, those will be everywhere. They'll, they'll those actually are everywhere prob- now. They'll probably like, be. They'll they'll probably be actually using the Wii U's to build the uh, lane dividers. Yes. <laughs> To divide yeah, people yeah, up yeah. to get their Xbox and their yeah. PlayStation Three, you'll like, be you you'll be you'll be two lines, you know, one for Xbox, one for or uh, Xbox One, one for PlayStation Four, and then in between those two lines will be a wall of we yeah. use. That yeah, no, use. or or if well, or we if didn't know what to do with yeah. these things, so if you if you're at Best Buy and there's like a sign, you know. You know, were you looking for PlayStation 4 or Xbox One? We have Wii U, and, like, they just make, like, the lines that you wait for the cashier just, like, a wall, like an eight-foot-high wall of Wii U's. Because <laughs> they're there. You can do it. Yeah. Uh. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, uh, for Gamescom, I'm, I'm hoping that there's games that I don't know about yet. Um, and it, in terms of the systems, really the only thing I'm, I'm clamoring for is, is the release date. Yeah, right. Yeah. So Well there's not really much else left at this point other than that, so No, no. Just no. getting that date and then uh, you know, bunkering in, man. It's getting close. I'm getting excited and I'm getting oh, giddy I'm like super little. excited. <laughs> I'm damn excited. I'm getting Anyways, all giddy. <clears throat> so any more news out there? Uh no, not that I can really think of. Uh you know, Call of Duty was today and mm-hmm. uh there'll be a couple there'll be a, a lot of news here in the next couple weeks. So yeah, yeah. Ne- next week's edition is going to be hopefully packed with a bunch of cool stories from Gamescom. So, um, yeah. Nick, do you mind if we take a, a break for about two minutes? Oh no. Cool. I'm going to refill my water and tinkle. Okay. <laughs> so I'll, be, I'll be right back. Okay. Don't turn anything off. I will not turn anything off, sir. I've been drinking a lot of water. It's good. Keep yourself yeah. hydrated. Yeah, my pee is clear. We're back, <laughs> by the way. Break is over. Union rules dictate you can only have a one-minute break. That's a pod, the podcast. podcast, Union Rules. Yes. We should start one, by the way. I'm yeah. rolling in dough. <laughs> you can't subject me to these this kind of work environment, Rob. How dare you demand I do a four-hour <laughs> podcast talking about shit that I like. Have you seen how dirty the bathroom is in this house? <laughs> <laughs> These mics are not good enough. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll go right into... Uh, we've got two topics of the week. Um, first one we'll hit up is Nintendo. It, the financial news 
I think was worse than what people thought in terms of, of Wii U sales. So I'm just going to pose the question to you, Nick. Is Nintendo dying? Uh, I mean, dying's a harsh word. I don't think they're dying by any means. I think... Uh, I think dead I think is it, a harsh word. <laughs> well, dying, dying, I, I, when I say dying, do you see an end of Nintendo as a hardware manufacturer? As a as a big box uh, mm -hmm. connect to your TV console manufacturer, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, I can totally see I could totally see this being the last uh, console that they. Uh, I'm oh. listening. <laughs> okay, I could totally see this being the last console uh, that they bring out. Uh, will they ever get out of the handheld market? I think they would have to file for bankruptcy before they get out of the handheld market. Uh, and, and considering that, you know, the 3DS and their handhelds are basically what's keeping them above water, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they sell that. And, I mean, ev everybody went fucking batshit crazy when Animal Crossing New Leaf came out, which... Mm -hmm. it, it's still are. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but, you know, uh, my son, he loves it. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but, you know, so I, I think... As long as they're they have a handheld, they'll they'll still be around. They'll be a Nintendo, uh, and will they will they start releasing their their other titles on other consoles? Who knows? I mean, I I I almost say they would keep that stuff so close to their chest that we would never see it anywhere else but on a Nintendo machine. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fairly certain I'm fairly certain that uh, this will be the last. S Console we see from them for for a long, long time. Interesting. Uh, I don't. I think you don't. You know, one. Like I, I will. I think people always want to put dirt on Barry Nintendo. I mean, yeah, they their handheld market is really strong. They make a ton of money on their handheld units. I mean, the Nintendo sixty four. That was oh, Nintendo's dead. Everyone's moved to CDs. Nintendo's still a cartridge. They're dead. The GameCube, still not CD. Nintendo's dead. The Wii U comes out, and you're like, what's with this funky controller? And it sells 100 million units, or damn near close to that. You know, in, in, in between, you have the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, yeah. the DS, the, the, the 3DS, and those things all sell. I think Nintendo makes a lot of money. They're real smart about how they do it, is they're the one that says, we're not going to lose any money when we have a new console come out, whether it's handheld or a, a proper console. So anytime you buy it, Nintendo is making money. The problem is no one's buying the Wii U right now. And if Yeah, and if I remember correctly, they are selling them at a loss. Uh, uh, at the price at the price point it's small, at. Small, very, very small loss where they say if you if they sold a game with the Wii U, which you're basically going to buy a game when you buy the Wii U, just a question of which one. Um, they then at that which point, one of the five, profitable. which one of yeah. the five games you're gonna exactly buy. <laughs> that and, and that's the problem. The system's I mean, been they, out for a fucking year and it it's got like, sh I mean, no shelf space. It's ridiculous. It, no it, selection it, of games. It, so it, it, I'm like on, every, that's on Nintendo. Yeah, it, no, you're you're totally right. You're totally right. I mean, that's what I you know, like I said, I, we said in, in one of the previous podcasts when we were talking about them. I just I, I don't understand how they couldn't launch that system without a proper, you know, Zelda or you know Mario or something. It, it just boggles my mind. So yeah, it's, and, it's uh, the comfort food. It's what we want. It's I, what we want when we have the system. I want to know that if I'm buying this thing, there is something I want for it. Yeah, I mean, I can make, I can make an argument. F I, I I mean, we talked about this before. I feel that the PlayStation Four and Xbox One launches are fairly weak, but within those. I feel that I... Can you see me still? Yeah, I can see you just fine. Oh, oh that was weird. Um, <laughs> I feel that there are at least two games with all of them that... with both of them that I, I would want to play. And when I'm looking at the Wii U, even to this day, with Pikmin 3 out, there is still not one game I want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit... Uh, I don't know... I, I like to try new things. I, I haven't mm -hmm. played Pikmin, Pikmin. It's gotten really good reviews, strong reviews, good scores. Uh, but I don't really have a desire to play that. Uh, you know, uh, I agree. I think uh, I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious about uh, Platinum's games, the wonderful 101. 
Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Looks, I, looks fun. Looks different. Uh, you know, I hear it's you know I hear it's not a very long title, which mm-hmm. isn't a good thing. I don't want to spend fifty or sixty bucks on a game that I'm going to beat in one sitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it you know it looks neat. But really, the only you know the reason I'm keeping that thing down there is because I know. At some point, I'll get a Zelda. At some point, I'll get a Mario Kart. At some point, I'll get a Smash Brothers. You know, uh, my question is: is that they're so they're they're so far away at this point, and mm-hmm. there's this new, there's these two new consoles looming, just just you know bearing down on Nintendo. That you know, I'm at really asking myself: like, am I really really going to care about those games? when they finally do come out am I you know at that point you know I'm going to be a little bit into the selection of games on the PS4 and Xbox one am I really going to go back to that Wii U I, I you know, think or you is, will just yeah, like I, so? I will yeah. I mean those those franchises that you mentioned the the, the Metroids the Mario proper Mario games none of this 2D shit that we're getting anymore <laughs> um, that's Zelda because they can make that really quick we can make this really quick guys <laughs> no one's buying it that's not what that's not what anyone wants yeah um, I mean the, those franchises are the quality is always top notch yeah they and, are you're right you're right. And we've been playing those. Have you ever been by a proper Zelda game, proper Metroid game, proper Mario game? Have you ever, ever been disappointed? Ever. Okay. I, I, this when may I, say, be I say disappointed, not like, eh, this one's all right. Yeah, I, I, I will say I have been disappointed with one Zelda game. Which one? Uh, I absolutely, and people love it, I absolutely cannot fucking stand Majora's Mask. I hate that game with a passion. That you will not believe. I can't stand that game. That was also uh, my least favorite. But <laughs> there's been ten I, I, of them, so they're running at ninety percent, basically, of like really good Zelda games. Yeah, yeah. So. So yeah, I I, I don't think it's gonna be. I, I don't think when when you talk about a console and Nintendo, I don't think it's going to be the go-to console that it was like at Super Nintendo. Yeah, no, it's it'll not. never. It, they'll never be at the. You know, they'll never have their Super Nintendo uh, status, that legacy that they had with that. You know. Yeah, but I think you you can look at it, and you know, the price point absolutely needs to change. I know that Iwata said today that he he feels that that three fifty is okay for that system. It is not at all okay. At no all. way. Okay. No way. Um, when the ninety nine dollar Ouya has more internal storage space than the $300 Wii U system, it's you have joke. an issue. <laughs> is you joke. have an issue. So, Yeah, and you know the gamepad, I, mean, I, I hear that Pikmin, uh, again, I haven't played it, uh, but Pikmin 3, I hear that doesn't really use the gamepad. So it's like, why the fuck did I buy this system for? I bought yeah. it because it's supposed to have some crazy gamepad with it, but the games aren't you know using this thing effectively. You know what I bought it for? And I started playing last night, and it kept me up all night long. Zombie U? Because I could, because I could play it on the, the gamepad. Fuck no, not Zombie U. What are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> DuckTales. The original or the remastered? The remastered version of DuckTales. So you bought you bought that on, on the Wii U? For the simple fact that I could play that motherfucker on the gamepad, so if somebody's on the TV or I'm laying in bed at night, I can have that fucking pad in my lap and I can be playing DuckTales. No, you know what? <laughs> You're on to something right now. You own a Wii U. How many classic uh, NES and SNES games are available to purchase on their digital store? Not, not a whole lot yet. I'd say maybe about 20 or so. That's where they can fucking kill it. Yeah, and some of them are some of them are priced decently. Others of them are pretty outrageous. You go the, if if Nintendo's smart, they've made their money on those games. This is what I would do. I'm I'm always for hire. So any anyone out there that wants to hire me, <laughs> feel free. I would say you know what, nostalgia, nostalgia, nostalgia. Uh, you know, aside from licensing fees or whatever, we're gonna put Nintendo games out there and we're gonna sell them for ninety nine fucking cents. There you go. You can't tell me that you wouldn't want to, like, hey, 99 cents for Super Mario Brothers 3, I could play it on my game pan? Cool. Done. Yeah. Like, that... Totally. If, you, if, they did, if they were smart and they did that and they got their heads out of their ass, without even a, a, a Wii U game proper that I want, at that point in time, I would say, well, this would be my classic system. Yep. Sold. Absolutely right. sold. 
Yeah, they start. They need, and the other thing they need to do, and I think they're planning on doing it. They just haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. Is similar to the virtual console on the original Wii. I think they're going to start dropping uh, Genesis and Turbo Graphics 16 games onto the eShop for the Wii U soon. So uh, it's perfect. You got you got the gamepad for it. You got because you don't really want to play that stuff on a Wii, but you'll play it on the gamepad itself. Yeah, I mean, you're not. Would you, if you bought the original Metroid, are you gonna play that on your big screen TV where it looks like shit, or are you gonna play it on the? <laughs> no, you're gonna play it on the. In fact, I did. I bought Super Metroid off the. There you go. The eShop. There you so. go. Name name me a game. I mean, it, it could even be. It could even be Nintendo 64 games for all I care. Mm-hmm. Name me a game that you wouldn't buy again for 99 cents. Oh yeah, no, totally. And they made their money off of it. They could sell. Oh my God! That would I wouldn't. Save I wouldn't buy Superman sixty four again for ninety nine cents. All right. Well, there there are <laughs> games that you wouldn't buy again, but right, two million people would buy Super Mario World. Yeah, they would. Bucks. It's on there. Yeah, done. Super Mario World's on there. Done. Yep. So, but I think they're charging like seven ninety nine for it. That's that's what's got to change. You got to go or nine ninety nine or something like that. I yeah. Mean, it's, I mean you know, that. When when people talk about how the smartphones have crushed the industry, it's really because of the price points. Yeah, that's yep. that's what's done it. Um, so, all right. So we both feel you feel that Nintendo's this is their last console. I don't. But it, neither of us only, feel. Neither I mean, of I us just, feel that they're dead or dying. I just I, I just don't see them. I just can't see them coming out of nowhere and just being like, you know, oh my god, uh, you know, we totally screwed up. Here's our here's another new system. I mean, what you know? I mean, do you think? What do you think? Do you think halfway through the the lifespan of the PlayStation Four and the Xbox One, they'll they'll introduce something new that's better, or or will they? You know, because I mean, look what they did this time. I mean, I don't understand who makes these decisions for them. But why at the end of two systems' lifespans are you going to release something that is is only you know is, is parallel? You know, I mean, there's there was not a huge quality jump, uh, you know, visually or in the power department behind this system uh, compared to the to the 360 and the PlayStation 3. So there was nothing there to really... I mean, I, you know, it's like they struck gold once with the Wii and the gimmick, and I think they thought, oh, we can do it again with this. And they didn't bother to, to think about, you know... Well, you know, maybe we have to have some other features, some you know, something that'll draw the customer to this a little bit more than just, hey, look, you have a tablet and you're playing mm-hmm. on a tablet, you're playing your game system. You know, they need to, you know, they, they needed to to look at that a little bit bit better and figure out a different strategy and they and they didn't. They just decided they thought we had the we had the motion with the Wii U and we could show a bunch of grannies, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. their depends playing bowling in their living room. And it'll sell millions because everybody's me like, oh look, I can move. You know, all the I, old people. I I think ahead. the I think the way that the Wii sold and the number of units that it sold, I think that surprised Nintendo. Yeah, I think it did too. I think that bef- they it was it was a gimmick, and everybody right. bought into it. It was a fad. It was like, oh, you know, every you went over to somebody's house, mm-hmm. they had Wii Sports, mm-hmm. you know, and there was. You know, ten people there, or whatever, or six people there, and it was like a little party, and you all played bowling and you played tennis, and you're like, "Oh man, this is fucking great! This is amazing!" And mm-hmm. then you're like, "Oh, we totally got to get one of these for the house," you know. And then you went out and you bought one, and then you realize when nobody's around, you don't fucking touch the thing, you know. You break, you, you might bust mm-hmm. it out when you got a yep. group of people over to play on it or something like that, but you know, other than that, it's you know, and they are like, "Man." You know, I should never bought this thing or whatever. So, I will say this though: I think Nintendo, if we if we lump Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo all into you know all into one, Nintendo is the only one that doesn't need third party support. They've proven it time and time again that they don't need third party su- support to survive. No one bought third party games for the Wii. No one. They didn't stop. Well, so they didn't stop making them. They're the only ones that that can survive because. The titles that they make, the, the games that we've mentioned before, and and the iterations and takes on those games sell so well and sell those systems that they don't need it. They could be insular and just say, "All right, if you want a Nintendo game, we're going to make all the money, but you got to buy our system with it." Yeah, you know, but I challenge, but I challenge you, I challenge okay. you to walk into a household that has a Wii system 
Mm-hmm. And that's it. Oh, no, no, they no. They don't I'm have not, anything saying, else to play on. But also Nintendo isn't... Nintendo is going to be usually the secondary console now. Yeah, yeah, they will. But that's what I'm saying. They can survive without third-party support because while you're waiting a fucking millennium and a half between games to come out, like, oh, I just got done playing the Zelda. Okay, I'll sit down the controller and wait another seven years before I get the next one. Well, mm-hmm. what are you doing in that seven years? You're playing on your other system. You but know, does that's Nintendo got care? game after game after game coming out. Nintendo well, they should care. care. Oh, no, they should what? care. They want to make money. They need to make. They, they, they obviously they are not making. <laughs> they're 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 obviously not making because, as well, much money as no. they they need to be making. We care. We care because we want more from them. They don't care because if if you bought the system and you bought those games because pretty much every Mario and every Zelda game and every Metroid game, like the real ones, tell me you're not going to buy them. Oh yeah, no, you are. You, yeah. So if they're selling if they're selling those games and they're selling them you know ten million copies of each of those games and they're able to get two Zeldas two Metroids two Mario's and you're selling 10, 10 million of those and you got you know twenty five fifty you know be twenty five million to fifty million Wii U's out there as a secondary system because now if they're smart they're going to start putting ninety nine cent games in there. They're going to make a ton of money, and all they need to do is keep their stockholders happy. And then you also remember that they make so much money on the handheld side with the 3DS well, that's what I'm and saying. all those games. If it wasn't for the handheld side of their, their business. They would struggle mightily if it wasn't for that. Yeah. So, And their and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're features, their policies, their approach to everything is so antiquated when it comes to... I agree. You know, when you compare them to... To Sony and Microsoft, I mean that. I think that's what hurts me the most. You, you know, know cu- cuts me cuts me the deepest right in the heart when I think about Nintendo. Is is like I you know I w- I remember unboxing my Super Nintendo. I remember mm-hmm. bringing it home that day, and there being like seven of me and my buddies in the den, fucking playing F Zero, Super Mario World nonstop, and being like, oh my god, this is amazing. And it's like, seven, and then all up in your face. And then time stopped right there for Nintendo, and they're like, "Oh, we're done. That's you all know, we'll ever need to do." I, I do, I do agree with you, but I also think I think Nintendo itself is seen not really as a high tech gadget; they're seen more as toys. Yeah, and that's a shame because I mean, it's what Nintendo wants, though. They should, they should real. I mean, the 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 video game marketplaces, it's it's grown up, you know. I mean, how many times a year do you read some article on Yahoo or Google where they talk about, you know, three hundred and sixty some odd billion dollars are spent in this industry, and it's makes it grosses more money than the film industry does a year, and blah 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 blah. And it's like, well, okay, obviously it's not a children's toy anymore, so you know, adults but- and children can enjoy it together, so. Well, we can go. We can go on and on and on about this one. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll have to. We'll have to stop this topic here in the track. Here in our tracks, and okay. we're going to go to our second topic of the week. Which you know, I'm surprised we talked that long about Nintendo. I thought that was going to be like a five minute, or we went on for quite a bit longer than that. Um, Sorry, <laughs> that's me. My passion starts to spill no, that's, out because that's, that's, it's just they disappoint me. We can I always. Was, you, you, you didn't you didn't know me at that point in time, but I talked up the fuck out of the Wii U. Like when it was coming out, I was like telling all my buddies, I was like, I think they've really learned their lesson, man. I think this time is gonna be different. You know, when they showed it and they showed that they are having third party games come out with it and stuff, I was like, you know, I think they've really they've really got it figured out. They're gonna have a they're actually gonna be online this time. They're gonna have some kind of online communication, you're gonna have a friends list. They yeah. finally got it. It's really and then, stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then it just it just fight like you know, oh god, we're going down. It was a fucking nosedive, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. It just, you know what? That wasn't even a nosedive. That was I stumbled out of the plane and I'm falling rapidly. Yeah, like, it just yeah, it was the ground. So, but we'll, so. I'm sure we'll talk more about Nintendo. Sure. All the time because <laughs> that's we need to we need to make one thing clear to everyone that's going to listen to this. The NES was probably it was my first system, like console mm-hmm. system, and yeah. I've grown up. I have never not had a Nintendo system. Yep. And it hurts me that I'm saying these things, but it's reality. And yep. We don't want that. We I I cannot imagine a world of video games without Nintendo. It is very difficult. 
But yep. They're not dead. They might be dying slowly, but they're not. <laughs> so our other topic of the week is our boys. We can't even blame Don Matrick for this one now. So who are we blaming now? Because the Kinect is no longer needed for the Xbox oh. One to work. And the internet fucking exploded. Again, it explodes every time. Every time. I don't, time. Know, every I don't time. know how many, I don't know how many times I'm we're going to get this Like I quick. said, every time you open up your web browser, it's a new story about funny, you know. I, I just want to oh. get this out of the way. I, I think a lot of the internet rage for Microsoft is the accumulation of change. It's yeah. like, oh, even if it's a small little change that they're doing right now, like, oh, another one, oh, oh. This one is fucking important. This one's probably the most important one that they've done. Right. Fuck their policy change. It doesn't affect me, and I think people will be... I think at the end of the day, use games, blah, 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 blah. People wouldn't have given too much of a shit. No, I this don't one so. I think is more important than any other policy that they've changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, numerous reasons. Uh, I think that I think uh, you know with what's going on in the news with with the, the wiretappings and the government listening in on phone calls and things like that. This privacy issue with the Connect became a huge deal. They blew that out of proportion. You mm -hmm. know, just through the Definitely. roof. So I think they felt a, I think they felt a lot of pressure there. And then the other thing I think is that they step back and they look at the I I think they've been looking at the numbers and uh, you know I think it's just it's weighing so heavily in Sony's favor right now that they're just trying to find any any way to 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 put a positive spin on that unit and and show people oh no 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 we, it's really not like that no okay you don't have to have it uh, you know hooked up now. We're not going to spy on you all the time. You can actually disconnect it, and it'll, and it'll work. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and and who knows? I mean, you know, you know, the you start hearing those rumblings too of, oh well, maybe that means they're going to make an announcement at Gamescom that they're going to have a unit that's not packed in with a connect. That's going to okay. be a hundred dollars cheaper. Okay. You know? How would you, you feel? Buy. How would you? You don't. Do you have the Xbox One pre-order right now? No, not yet. Okay, I do. And someone i i have I have a connect, and mm -hmm. it sits right above my head. Mm -hmm. And it's in the plastic that it came in out of the box. I don't fucking care about those things. I don't give a shit about the connect. And right, one thing that one thing that was turning me off about the Xbox One was when they said that you needed the connect for it to work. Right. And I'm like, ah, shit, I don't want to have that fucking thing plugged in. So yep. in what, on one hand, I'm happy that it, that, that it no longer requires Connect. On the other hand, I'm looking at it as like, all right, well, I'm paying $500 for a machine, and I was willing to pay $500 for a machine even though it came with the Connect just to have the fucking machine. Right. So now if you have if, – if they do release a, a system without the Connect. It's like, well, that's the fucking one I wanted. And right. If that's the hundred dollar price difference. Then you're basically telling me that the Connect is fucking useless. And and it once again goes back to the conversation we had previously, where I'm talking about if you truly believe and have confidence in your product, you're gonna de you're gonna stand behind your decisions. Yeah. That, you know, it, I was I was gonna ask you, you. You know, if you feel that having the connect features are going to make your games better and that this this connect is so technologically this connect the you know the motion it can read the resolution of the camera all the things that it can do uh, the facial recognition you know being able to recognize the people all the things you're going to be able to do all the voice commands are is one of the things that's going to put put your sy system on a pedestal above the competition and then you say oh you don't really need it yeah, it's I, like I, what? It's like you know, just like with the cloud stuff. Like I said uh -huh. before, it's like oh yeah, you got to be connected to the internet all the time because you're gonna be. It's gonna be using cloud computing. It's gonna make the game so much better. You're gonna want to play your games on the Xbox One well, because of that. Let's be, let's be fair. No, with, never mind. Yeah, with, with the cloud <laughs> with the cloud stuff, a game that requires it, you still have to be connected online. I think. People oh yeah. Would, the yeah. the bug the bug out was you're gonna get that game. It's gonna you know, check every 24 hours, blah, blah, blah. That was the bug out. 
because people realize, like, hey, are you buying Call of Duty for the single-player campaign? Fuck you, no, you're not. You're buying it for multiplayer, which is going to require right. you to be connected to online, period. Um, so let me ask you, what what is more egregious to you that Microsoft seemed to have a really cool vision for the Xbox One mm-hmm. and is... What's what's worse, them making all the changes, or and not sticking to their vision, or their original vision? Oh, I I think like like I've said before, uh, I mean they're first and foremost are business and they're they want to make money, you know. So when you're when you have this overwhelming negative feedback coming from the community. You know, obviously, that starts to scare people, and the people it starts to scare the people that make decisions. And then, you know, maybe the you know maybe the lower level people that are the ones who came up with the ideas are like, no, 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 trust me, it'll work. It'll be really great when it comes out. But then the people above them say, have you been on the internet lately, motherfucker? Have you been in a in a forum? Have you have you been have this you looked is, at the videos online? These people are killing us. You know. Uh, sorry to inter- interrupt. Yeah, no, go this ahead. Is, this is this is what I would say to to all that shit. Is if you, I mean, they talked about those things years ago. This mm-hmm. is not like, hey, it's April. We need to announce this fucking thing. Let's just throw it out there. I think they really felt compelled by their original idea. And yes, there's going to be backlash because there is differences. People don't like change. They don't. And I think Microsoft they they did a good job in the sense that they listened to people, but I think the thing that worries me more is their, their, their willingness to change the way that they have, because mm-hmm. they took the easy way out, in my opinion. Instead of selling all that shit, they took the easy right. way out and just say, alright, it's just gone now. Thanks. Yeah. We heard you loud and clear. It's gone. But you've, sl- you've not slowly, you very rapidly have, have made fundamental changes to that system yeah, that, you've completely changed your product. The product that they showed us, uh, what, six months ago? Or, not even six four, months ago. Four right. months ago? In May. Yeah, in May. They, they've they completely wiped the slate clean and said, and everything that they said, oh, yeah, you're going to need this, and it's going to do this, this. Oh, never mind. Never mind. And, it's you know, all by the gone. Way, now, now the Kinect was the last fucking thing that they had. Yep. The last thing that they had. I mean, the, and, and I think they were right. They were on, I would say... A, a, a quiet but positive wave of, of good momentum in yeah. that, you know, the, the indie game things, like, all right, cool, that's really good for them. There is no headset in the box, and then, like, you know, hey, we're going to put a headset in the box. That was a good, I mean, they had a, the GPU clock speed went up. All right, that's a cool thing. All right, great. Yeah. And now connect. So, like, it's not required anymore. Like, okay, why the fuck am I paying $500 for this now? <laughs> It all comes down to why am I paying five hundred fucking dollars for that because, thing? <laughs> if you could take it out of the box and charge me four hundred bucks, I'm all in. But why yeah, am I paying five hundred yeah. bucks again? But that's gonna but but that's gonna be the the uh, the worst thing they could possibly do to all these people that have it already pre ordered. You know, I know. is is if I'm they say yeah, is if they say okay, well you know what we're announcing this unit that doesn't come with it, and if you really want to have connect features later, you can buy it separately for a hundred bucks or whatever. Uh, which I I can see in total in totally in the realm of possibility for for them I I you know like I said I think they t- they took a step back and they looked at the numbers and they realized man we we just have not built up enough momentum for this unit this unit's coming out you know in the next couple months we have to we have to we have to keep spinning it man we have to keep putting all this positive feedback and uh, it's, I, it's just not happening I think people are just looking at it and it's just become it's just become a big joke you know. Yeah, it's they're a joke right now. Yeah. I hate to say it. I'm still mine's still on pre-order, but it's like, well, okay. You know, I'm I'm looking at it. The the only thing I'm thinking about is why did they do this? What reason? There has to be a legitimate reason why they are saying that the Connect is no longer needed. I mean, it, it, are they going to come out with another SKU that's less expensive? All right. Well, if they do that, you know, what are the ramifications for it? Now a Connect is no longer in every box. Which is what they were banking on when they were talking with publishers, like, "Hey, Connect is going to be there, so go ahead and do cr- cool things." Do publisher, do developers not want to fuck with it? There's like, no one cares. Do people really care about the Connect? I mean, 
what I, I'm very curious to hear the reason why that that is no longer needed for the for the well, unit to function. Yeah, it, well, like I'm saying, it's just it's just so much negative feedback, so much pressure dealing around that thing, you know. And but it's and, not like they, know, but it's not like they said like, all right, the connect is lo- no longer required. We're also going to have a skew without the connect. I, I mean, if you're gonna say that, if you're gonna say that, you also have to give us like, you have to give us a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow too. It's not like. Uh, the rug is being taken out from under you. Thanks. That's <laughs> well, what, essentially if, if what we look done. at how if we look how they've trended for the last couple months. Yeah. I would. It would be a safe bet that at some point here in the next couple weeks, we're going to get an announcement that there's going to be a skew that doesn't include the connect because that's. It seems like that's that has been the path that you know they've been on with this unit. They announce, you know, oh, okay, yeah, here's the headset. Yeah, okay, we're looking into options. We're looking into options of you using your Xbox One or 360 headsets. Oh, here's the headset in the box now. Yep. You know, yep. and it just it just kind of builds momentum until they finally just give in, you know. You know, and, and, it's, right, it's, and right away, as soon as they announced that the Kinect couldn't be plugged in, you know, people just exploded again going, oh, oh, so that, I, you know, they're they're gonna have one without the connect, you know. That means they're gonna announce one without the connect in the box. It's gonna be cheaper, hundred bucks cheaper to compete with Sony, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. And I just have a feeling that that momentum is gonna build up and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna breathe down on them again. And they're just gonna go, yeah, okay, you're right, you you found us out, you know. They, there's they, I mean, at what point in time do they stick to their guns? But it, too late for that. I mean, like I said, it's a joke now. They're not gonna stick to their guns. I mean, they, do. They, I, I mean, I'm at the I'm at the point now where do I trust that these policies are even going to stick? I mean, they're, they're or are they just always going to be in flux? Or at some point in time, as as a company, it's a it, you have to you have to say this is our vision. We have to sell the vision. We have to get people interested in what we are selling. Yeah. And the more that we change, and like, all right, cool, this is a nice change, and people are very happy that we made this change. But at some point in time, you have to say you have to draw a line in the sand and say the buck stops here. We can't allow these things to change anymore. We have to do a better job of getting the message out and getting people interested in it. Right. And, they're and just I don't know. And I don't know how they're going to do that. I don't know how they're going to do that. Sell now it to us. So, let so, us know. Yeah. Let us know how so that's going to make everything better. You know, they're so close to the. I mean, what is it? You know, two two months now, two three months, and they'll be here. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's not very much time to recuperate from being kind of the internet, you know, joke right now as far as, you know, all these policy changes. You know, and it, it's a sad thing because you're like me. We've been playing games our whole lives and we're the early adopter guys, man. We wanna mm-hmm. we want the we want the fucking new car smell the day it comes out. We want to take it out of the wrapper and be like, yep. look at this shit right here. And I'm I'm super conflicted. Like I am I, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm kind of betraying myself a little bit because mm-hmm. there's literally like uh, you know there hasn't been a major game system that hasn't come out in the last you know god 25 years uh, you know barring like the Atari Jaguars or 3DO <laughs> something like that uh, that I haven't <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't purchased the day it came out. Yep. And. Uh, and and you know and that's just the gamer in me, man, the hardcore gamer. I, I yeah. want to play the games, you know. And I got buddies around here that are just giving me shit, like, oh yeah, you see the fucking Xbox doesn't need the connect. You still gonna get one, Nick? Are you still gonna get? Well, look at this piece of shit. They keep changing it. And I'm like, I he, my only reply is, man, I really want to play Dead Rising three. <laughs> that's all I tell them. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's I really want to play that game, guys. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. I love video games. It doesn't matter what system it's on. I, if it's a game I want to play, I want to play it. You know. Yeah, and, and, and uh, that's why I like doing this podcast with you because on that end we are a hundred percent in agreement. Like we love games. Like I, I mean, I, I see, I see my brand new console. It's almost like a piece of art that I'm yep. proud to show off. And people will look at me. <laughs> you play games? I'm like, God damn right, I play games. You got a fucking problem with that? I'm not embarrassed by it. I like them. Yeah. I love them, and right. I want to be proud of these things. And, and and it's the nostalgia. It's like what you just said. Like I want to have that system the day it comes out, just because of the hardcore. Like I want it. Like I'm yep. thirsting for that. But I'm. Looking it makes at you it. feel. It makes you feel like a little kid again, man. Like you. Yeah. Re- it takes you back to the. You know. 
like that day you got, you know, like I said, like that day I got my Super Nintendo and I was like, oh my god, this is the greatest day of mm-hmm. my life. Look, all my buddies around, we're playing this shit nonstop. It's amazing. Wow, this is just, it's like that euphoric moment. You're just like, this is amazing. The yeah. like all your problems go away for a little bit, and you're just you're just zoned in, man. You're tuned in, and you're you know you're just enjoying it. You know, it's like a drug. You know, you're just you're just high on it right then. You know, and uh, and like I said, I I feel really bad because I don't have an Xbox One pre-ordered, and I'm just spooked. I'm spooked by the whole thing. I really really want to get it. I really want to play Dead Rising, like I just said, but I I I just that's I don't know if that's enough for me this time. I don't know if that's enough, and it's like I, I you know, I've told my guy, my uh, uh, buddies, that it's just like, you know, I think maybe I'll wait until early next year when there's yeah. a, more selection, mm-hmm. more titles for it. So let, let, let me ask you a question, Nick, because I'm, I'm, I'm. One last question, and then then we'll 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 wrap it up. Okay. What, I, what I've noticed is that you've got people that only have PlayStation Three people that only mm-hmm. have the Xbox 360, and then there's people like you and I that have both. Yeah. People that only have the 360 are still more interested in the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. The people that ha- only have the PlayStation 3 are only interested in the PlayStation 4. What I'm finding is the people like you that have both, you're making a decision, and you're making a decision, even though the Xbox 360 is your console of choice right now, correct? You're correct, yes. You are making the move to PlayStation 4 out of the gate for sure. For sure, yeah. Are you finding that a lot of your friends that have both systems are are making the same choice? Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just there's not a lot of conf- confidence in Microsoft right now. So, and uh, you know, if there's one if there's one thing, uh, obviously Sony's they've hit all the key points. And they've and they've kind of played devil advocate to everything that the that Microsoft has done. So you know Microsoft's been just been throwing them bones left and right, and PlayStation's just been eating them up. You know Sony's been eating them up, and uh, so that's you know given it a lot of positive spin. And uh, you know and I would have played my PlayStation Three a lot more and used a lot more had they mm-hmm. just fixed a few minor little things. Mm-hmm. And, you know I play mm-hmm. a lot online, and now that I know the online infrastructure on the PS4 is going to be you know, this pretty much the same thing as what you'd get with the Xbox or the X, you know, 360 or the Xbox mm-hmm. One or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sold. You know, and uh, the third party's not going to really be that huge of a deal. There's going to be a few no. ex- exclusives here or there, but I mean, they'll be available for both systems. So yeah, it, 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 when it comes down to it, the one thing that I'm asking, I'm I'm asking people is, I'm simple. What are you taking? You're so loyal to one or the other. What are you taking with? Uh oh, you're breaking up on me pretty bad. I broke up. I'll yeah, I'll, I'll repeat here. the question. Go so ahead. what I'm asking what I'm asking people is that are, that are so loyal to one or the other is why are you loyal to that one and you're not even gonna look at the other one? Like, well, you know, just uh, my friends, blah blah blah. blah. Really, what are you taking with you to the next generation from this current generation? Nothing. Nothing. You're not taking your games. You're taking your small little friends list with you. And your imaginary gamer score trophy list that yep. is completely useless. You are not taking a damn thing with you. <laughs> yeah. So why be why be loyal to that when you're not why? Yep. Why not look at the other one? Why not see which one's a better buy for you? You might find that you like one more than the other, but yeah, to to wrap this up, it's I think it's an for Microsoft. It's been an accumulation of changes that it's now just become a joke, and they got to figure this stuff out, and they've got to do a better job of selling what they have to offer. Because I th- I thought what they had to offer three four months ago was pretty badass. Now I'm like, it's a fucking less powerful PlayStation Four that's more expensive. Okay. Right. Yeah, and uh, I guess you know at Gamescon we'll we'll find out if uh, we'll find out if they're gonna make it you know worth your while if they announce anything big there. Uh, like I said, with that new you know if they release a new IP or what what they show off there, and then uh, also like I said, the looming question of you know are we all of a sudden gonna get a four hundred dollar Xbox One that doesn't come with a Connect? So, but uh, well, all right, I guess we we will hopefully see you next week. <laughs> and uh, un- until then we'll we'll wrap this up
Um, Nick, yes. where, can, where can our listeners find your work? They can find my work on uh, GameFan365.com or at GameFan365 on Twitter. Right on, right on. And Rob, what about yours? Where can they find you at? Uh, they can follow me on Twitter at Robzilla1979 or GamesOnHate.com. And, right. and, yeah, and they can I, find this podcast on iTunes now. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll, <laughs> I forgot about that. Just search, like on iTunes, you just have to search for uh, Game Fan or Games on Hate, and yep. you'll find it. That is right. It'll come so, up until we until we properly name it. <laughs> so until uh, we we on for next week. Uh, hopefully, I, I'm barring there's not like the apocalypse or anything. I, hopefully, my schedule won't be insane like it's it has Gamescom, been. So. dude, call in sick, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> So. All right. Well, well, Nick, it was it was nice to talk to you again. And you too, uh, sir. Yep. Until next week, we are ghost. All bye, right. See you everybody. later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>